<laughs> going to cover the foundation. It's very important that we all understand this part before I move into the other part because everything we talk about from here on will be based on this foundation. You've got to get this straight, and I will make sure that we do not move on until you get this part straight, okay? First of all, I think it's important for us to understand some of the concepts of candlesticks. I will tell you that our approach to the markets is a technical one. Many of you who know pristine.com and the services it offers are, are, are very much familiar with that. We approach the markets from a technical point of view, not a fundamental point of view. It is our philosophy that charts do not lie. CEOs lie, annual, annual reports lie, accountants lie, numbers lie. I was an accountant. I've made numbers lie. All right? Charts do not lie. You know why? Because every single transaction that is made has to show up on the tape. I am watching through the charts the footprints of every single piece of money. Every time a CEO puts his money where his mouth is, it shows up on the chart. There are times, obviously, where a CEO can get on CNBC and, and talk so positively about his company while his grandmother, his, his girlfriend, his wife, and all the way down to the janitor in the firm is dumping the stock. But yet, those activities will show up on the chart. The charts are very much like the doctor's x-ray, which gives him a deeper insight into his patient. Well, stocks in the market are our patients, and charts show me the deeper aspect of what the players are doing. All right. With that being said, charts are not charts for me unless they are in Japanese candlestick form. How many people are familiar with Japanese candlesticks? I strongly urge, that's quite a number, and I'm very glad to hear that. I strongly urge that if you are not, that you pick up um, Steve Nissen's Japanese Candlestick Charting Techniques book. The title is Japanese Candlesticks Charting Technique, Techniques. It is written by Steve Nissen. It is absolutely the only book you ever need on candlesticks. In my opinion, it is the Bible as far as candlestick form. Now, there's a very important reason why I feel that charts should be viewed in candlestick form, and it is as follows. Simply because that it is visually easier to determine who's winning the game. Every single day is nothing more than a battle between the buyers and the sellers, the bulls and the bears, the haves and the have-nots, all right? The informed and the ill-informed. But broken down to its essence, every day is nothing more than a struggle, a battle going on between two dominant groups, buyers and sellers. The key to playing the market successfully is finding out who's winning the majority of the individual battles because that group is winning the war. And that group is what I term the Goliath in the market. So if, for instance, I can determine that of the past 10 days, seven days were won by the buyers, then who's the Goliath? The buyers. And who do I want to side with? Goliath, not David. If this were the Bible, it'd be David. It's the market. You bet with Goliath. All right? All right. So candlesticks show us very clearly, very clearly, who's winning the day. And it does it as follows. The most important price of every single bar, every single day, is the opening price. I want you to sear that into your brains. The most important price of the day is the opening price. The second most important price of the day is the closing price. Open and close. Now, we determine who won the day um, by determining where the close is in relationship to the opening price. So the opening price, for instance, let's say is at $40. If the stock closes above $40, the buyers won the day. If the stock opens at 40 and closes above 40, the buyers won the day. If the stock opens at $40 and closes for the session below 40, the sellers won the day. I want you to regard the opening price as the starting line of a race. And I want to see whether or not the stock ends behind the starting line telling me sellers won or 
above and beyond the starting line telling me that the buyers won. Candlesticks show that very clearly. Do I actually have a pointer up here somewhere? I do not. Okay. What I love about candlesticks, if we look at the second bar from the right, we will see that in candlestick form, there is a fat part of the bar, a fat, light-colored part of the bar. And above the fat parts, we have what we call wicks, or little stems. The fat part of the bar represents exactly what I explained to you, the difference between the open and close. And when the bar is light colored, that means that the bottom of that fat part is the open and the stock floated upward to close above the opening price. So the cylinder part, the fattest part of the bar, if it's light colored, means the buyers won the day. Of course, if we were to go to the fourth candlestick bar to the right, from the left, we see a very dark, ugly, nasty, long bar. This bar tells me that it was dark for that stock all day long virtually. That the stock opened relatively close to the high of the day and almost from the opening price, the sellers dominated the action and just kept pushing the buyers all the way down until they closed the stock for the day fractions off the low. So the dark bar tells me sellers have won the day. Make sense? The wicks on top of the high of the session, the wicks on the bottom of the close. Of course, on the first bar to the left, we find that there was an equilibrium between the two groups, an equilibrium between the buyers and the sellers. All right? No one really won that day. Okay, the bottom row are reversal bars, which basically represent cleanup by one group or the other. In other words, the first bottom bar to the left tells me that the stock opens, let's say, at $40, traded as low as, let's say, $38, and at a point around 38, the buyers just roared back and brought the stock all the way back to the finish line. Write this point down. The last side to have control is the winner. In this case, the last side to have control were the buyers. All right? The stock initially opened, dropped, then ended the day closing at the same part, same price. All right? In the second bar from your left, you have just the reverse. The stock opened near the low of the day, rallied where the buyers were in control for a specific period of time, and then all of a sudden the sellers retook the market and knocked the stock all the way back down to the opening price. In this scenario, in a very general way, the sellers have won the day because they were the last ones to be in control. Let's move on. This brings me to another one of our foundational blocks. And it may sound very simple, guys, but I will show you in, a, in very short order how powerful this very basic, simple is, uh, concept is. There are only three things a stock can do. Go up, go down, and go sideways. That's it. There is no other movement possible. There are, so what I'm really saying is that there are primarily three dominant trends in the market. Uptrends, downtrends, and sideways trends. An uptrend is defined as follows. A series of higher highs and a series of higher lows. In other words, each successive rally takes out or supersedes the prior peak from the prior rally, and each drop falls far short of the trough of the prior drop. This is a stock in an uptrend that is completely dominated by which group? The buyers. I want you to keep the definition in mind because it's going to become very important as we move forward. 
The definition of a downtrend is just the reverse. A series of, rel of lower highs and lower lows, meaning that every single time the stock rallies, it is a feeble rally that falls far short of the prior peak. And every single time the stock gets driven down, it falls deeper and lower than the prior drop did. This is a stock that obviously is in total control of by the sellers. And then we have the sideways trend, which is really nothing more than relatively equal highs and relatively equal lows. There is a tug of war going on between both groups, and neither of the groups is winning. Now, the key word in that definition is relatively equal highs and lows. We don't want to be too anal retentive about the highs and lows, OK? So there are only three trends, uptrend, downtrend, and sideways trend. And these three trends make up every single movement in the market. There's only three. If I can teach you how to play with great degree of accuracy, each one of these three trends, I can teach you how to cover yourself in every possible market environment in existence. All right? And that's the key. Now, in an uptrend, if you find a stock that is making a series of higher highs and higher lows, meaning that every high is higher than the prior high, every drop is, is higher than the prior low, your action as a swing trader is to buy the very next decline. I want, you to, I want you to understand this because it is critical. If you find a stock that meets strictly the criteria and definition of an uptrend, higher highs and higher lows, your job as a swing trader is to buy every single decline. Not some of them, not a few of them, but every single one. The only question you have to answer is when. Not if, when. If you find a stock that is in a downtrend, meaning that it is making a series of lower highs and lower lows, you obviously are in a very serious downtrend. I am telling you that I don't care what the earnings report says. I don't care what some high-paid Wall Street analyst with frayed shirt sleeves says. That every single rally in the stock is nothing to get excited about. As a matter of fact, every single rally is a sellable rally until that pattern or that definition ends. If you are in a sideways trend, meaning relatively equal highs and relatively equal lows, you as a market player can play both. You can buy the declines and you can sell the rallies. So let me go over this again, guys. If you find a stock that is making a series of higher highs and higher lows, that means that you are in an uptrend. If you are in an uptrend, you can buy every single decline. Your action is to buy the dips. If you are in a downtrend, and the stock is making a series of lower highs and lower lows. You are, that obviously means you're in a downtrend. If you're in a downtrend, your action is to sell every single rally. And when I say sell, that means that you can go short, or if you happen to be long in that stock, you'll want to get out on the very next rally.